He kōna e ipurangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. Yee gads, it's time for another episode of the Elemental Podcast from RNZ. I'm Alison Balance. And I'm Alan Blackman from the Auckland University of Technology. And we are up to episode 29, which means we're up to gadolinium, which does explain your rather strange greeting, Alison. Gadzooks. Gadolinium is a slightly strange name as well, so it deserves a strange greeting. Where does that name come from, Alan? Well, gadolinium was named after a Finnish chemist by the name Johan Gadolin. And, in fact, it's the only element with a name that's derived from Hebrew, uh, interestingly enough, for a Finnish chemist. Its root gadol, meaning great, was chosen by Gadolin's grandfather as his surname, and it comes from a translation of Maunula, the name of the Finnish farm that he lived on. God, that's a very complicated last name story. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So its discovery, now we've sort of heard of this in our Erbium episode, if you think back to that. Mm -hmm. So there's this little village of Itterby in Sweden that we talked about where there were a whole lot of rare earth oxides that were being mined there, a whole lot of lanthanoids. So in 1794, Gadolin had isolated a particular mineral that uh, he thought might have been a mixture of elements maybe, and this mineral that he found, once it was purified, uh, was going to be named gadolinite after him. And gadolin cautiously stated that this oxide, or earth, as he called it, could contain a new element. And uh, he went on to say that this would be a pity because the elements were already, and I quote, becoming far too numerous. What? <laughs> and at that, at that stage, there were around about 30 elements known. So uh, it's a little bit ironic considering that uh, the new element is now named after him. I wonder what he'd make of the periodic table now. It's up to 118 elements. <laughs> so vital stats for gadolinium, please. OK, so atomic number 64, and that puts it in the lanthanoids down the bottom of the periodic table there, chemical symbol GD, and it was discovered in 1880 as its oxide. So it wasn't actually named after Gadolin until Gadolin was uh, long gone, unfortunately, and never lived to uh, see it named after him. And because gadolinium is a lanthanoid, then we've, we've talked about a lot of lanthanoids on the series so far. And generally, we found that they were very, very difficult to obtain pure. And uh, that is also true of gadolinium. And long story short, I guess, in this case, was that there was a supposed new element which someone had called didymium, which I think is a great name. They isolated this, but then they eventually showed that this so-called pure element didymium was impure and contained, in fact, two other elements. And one of them was shown to be gadolinium. And pure gadolinium was, in fact, isolated by somebody that we've heard of many times before, the greatly named paul Émile Lecoq de Boisbardron. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Good on him. So as well as being hard to isolate, the thing that I remember about lanthanoids, so europium, uh, erbium, they've all been really reactive. Yes, indeed. So the pure metals all of all of the lanthanoids uh, react with air and water quite vigorously. So what's the story with gadolinium? What do we use it for? I'm guessing that many of the listeners probably haven't even heard of gadolinium before this. It does have a couple of very interesting uses, actually. So it's got very interesting magnetic behaviour, and it, because of this, is used in MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. OK, we better get the magnetic behaviour first. OK, so there's a, a little bit of chemistry here. Now, being a lanthanoid, so gadolinium has what we call F electrons. All of the elements have electrons in particular, orbitals we call them, and they are, can be S orbitals, P orbitals, D orbitals, or F orbitals. Now, in these F orbitals, gadolinium can place seven electrons in the free metal. And the really important thing about this is that the spins of these electrons can all be pointing the same way. And that is what gives rise to the large magnetic moment that gadolinium displays. And the fact that it can also behave as a permanent magnet. Now, if you recall an earlier episode the cobalt episode when we said that only five metals can act as permanent magnets, so gadolinium is one of those. However, if you warm it up beyond 19 degrees Celsius, which is a thing called the Curie temperature, which was named after Pierre, not Marie, 
then what happens is that these seven spins that are all aligned, they start to randomise and you lose the magnetic properties of gadolinium. So to make it keep those magnetic properties, you basically need to keep it below room temperature. Absolutely, yes. Now, MRI scans, familiar to everyone as a regular hospital procedure. How does gadolinium get used in that? It gets used in that as a consequence of all of these unpaired electron spins. So gadolinium compounds are used as what are called contrast agents in magnetic resonance imaging. Now, in chemistry, if you go into a chemistry department anywhere in the country, they will have a piece of equipment called a nuclear magnetic resonance machine, or NMR. And um, this is basically what a magnetic resonance imaging uh, machine in a hospital is. It's a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer. But people were sort of turned off by the name nuclear, and they didn't want to be put into the middle of something that was nuclear. So they dropped the name nuclear magnetic resonance, and the medical folk call it magnetic resonance imaging. MRI for short. MRI indeed, for short. So the way that this works is that you inject gadolinium complexes or gadolinium compounds into the body and what this does is to enhance the images that you get out of MRI. And specifically what you're looking at in an MRI scan are the hydrogen atoms of water molecules in the body and water molecules in different parts of the body behave differently And the gadolinium compound that you put in as a contrast agent helps the spectrometer quote-unquote see the hydrogen atoms of the water molecules in different particular environments in the body. The gadolinium compound is injected intravenously, and then hopefully what happens is that these compounds then accumulate in the abnormal tissues, and then the doctors can very easily see what's going on in there. So it's a good way of finding cancers and tumours, things like that. Yeah, absolutely, yes. So it's really useful in a kind of niche kind of way. Yeah, I guess. Not a lot of other huge uses for gadolinium. There's a gadolinium isotope, gadolinium-157, and that's used in nuclear reactors as a neutron moderator. The reason for this is that it's got an absolutely huge absorption cross-section for neutrons. What on earth um, does that mean, Alan? (laughs) In other words, it captures neutrons very, very effectively. And neutrons are kind of difficult to capture because they don't have any charge on them. But Gadolinium nuclei, I just love them. Another really interesting use for gadolinium and certainly some of its alloys is in a thing called magnetic cooling. So again, this is a consequence of these unpaired electron spins in gadolinium. So what you do is you put a gadolinium material into a magnetic field and what happens then is that the electron spins align with the magnetic field and the temperature rises a little bit. So you leave it to cool down to what it started with and then you take the magnetic field away And then the spins randomise, and because of that, the temperature drops because it takes energy from its surroundings to randomise those spins, and so the temperature drops. And so this is called adiabatic demagnetisation, and it is a way of cooling things to extremely low temperatures. Well, that's enough gadding about with gadolinium. Oh. Sorry. You've been listening (laughs) to episode 29 of the RNZ Elemental Podcast. Thanks heaps for your company. And if you'd like to listen to this episode again or any of the 28 preceding episodes, check us out at rnz.co.nz forward slash chemistry or subscribe at your favourite podcast app. We're back next time with Gallium. But until then, I'm Alan Blackman. And I'm Alison Balance. Matewa. Matewa.